Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about five things you might not have known about the Power BI desktop. Stay tuned. Okay, before I get started, I gotta say what's up to all my friends out in Africa, in Lesotho, in Malawi, and Mozambique. I had a great week of Power BI training for them. And this video is actually all because of them. I was hanging out them for, with them for a week in Lesotho. So if you don't know where Lesotho is, go look for it on the map. It's a little bitty country inside of a country. It's a country inside of South Africa. And I got to meet some great people. And I also spent a week doing Power BI training for the Elizabeth Glacier, Glacier Pediatric AIDS Foundation. And I, there was probably about 15 to 16 people and we spent the entire week, Monday through Friday, training them on Power BI. And during the week, we came up well, these five things came up that they were kind of like, huh, didn't know Power BI could do that. Didn't know the desktop could do that. And so I just was making notes and I decided not only am I gonna do a video about it, but this video is for you guys out there. All right, so you guys know how I like to do. Instead of all that talking, let's head over to my laptop. Okay, so the first thing is, let's, let's imagine, this is the Power BI desktop I have open. Let's imagine you've created your own KPI card. And so I have a text box here little pie chart that shows me the indication of whether or not, you know, my year over year sales are up or down. And so if I choose Idaho, you can see how it changed to green. If I choose Indiana, if I choose Illinois, right? If I just keep clicking on the list, you'll see how it's toggling between the colors, right? And so imagine I need to change the size of it, or I want to change the text in the text box or format the card. How do you do that, right? So if I come here on the, the report canvas and I click, and I try to click the pie chart, I try to click the text box, can't quite get to it. And there's things you can do to you know, work your way to it. But what I found, and I showed them this the best way, if you go to view, you click selection pane, and now in the selection pane, if I click red or green, you see how it highlights the pie chart? If I click text box, it highlights the text box, right? I can come in the text box and change it. And just using the selection pane, I can toggle between whatever elements are in that car. It's great, the selection pane, you know, we use it when we're creating bookmarks, but you never think about it when you're de designing these overlays of your own type of, you know, card. So I made my own custom KPI card, and now, right, I can use the selection pane to select the different items. If you guys wanna know more about how I created this, post it in the comments below. Maybe I'll do a video and show you how I did it. All right, so that's the first thing. That's number one. And they were like, Patrick, this is great. I'm like, of course it is, right? So number two, number two. So we talked about one thing, selection pane. Number two, and this was a fun one, because during the training, there was another training going on. I was in Lesotho, and there was another guy on my team. His name is Casper. What's up, Casper? Casper was in Kenya, and they were doing this workshop very similar to what we were doing. And we got a message on Teams, and they were like, hey, how do we make a uh, matrix in Power BI look like a pivot table in Excel. And I was like, well, right, right there, right there. I'm not gonna see it, right there. I was like, hmm, I know how to do that. So let me show you, right? So you have, I have my matrix set up and I have state and I have city, right? And I've all, I drilled all the way down. So if we go back up, so if we just drill up, what I did was there's a, you know, the expand all option right here. So I'm gonna expand all. And what I wanna do is, instead of having state and city in the same column, I wanna have it like a pivot table. I wanna shift the city over to its own column, right? And so what you do is, make sure the table is selected. I'm gonna close the selection pane. Open up the visualization pane. Click on format. And then expand row headers. And you're gonna see two options here. You're gonna see one option for a step, excuse me, a step layout. And then you're gonna see something that says, hey, step, turn step layout on or off. Right, if I increase the value of the step layout indentation, it just moves it over, right? It moves the, the things below in the drill over. But what I'd like to do is put it in its own column. It's simple, right? All you need to do, turn step layout off, and now it looks just like a pivot table. What? I simply excel. You get it, right? So now, as an end user, right, or as a consumer, it kind of looks like what I'm already doing in Excel, because people always want that. Why can't it look like what's in Excel? I want it like what's in Excel. Calm down, there you go. All right, that's number two, right? Number three, this one was really cool, really cool. We're sitting around this table in the boardroom in Lesotho, did I say I was in Lesotho? I was in Lesotho, I was in Africa, by the way. Um, and so, 
we're sitting around this board table and it was a guy sitting next to me. He was like, Patrick, we can't map our towns, our villages. So the way it works in Lesotho, they have the, they have Lesotho, which is a country, right? But then they have districts and the districts are synonymous with our states in the United States, okay? And then they have towns and I assumed, I made the assumption that the towns are synonymous with the city. So let me show you. So I built out this data set. So we're gonna come over here and let me delete this map just for effect. And so I built out a data set. I just scraped, scraped the data from Wikipedia because everything on Wikipedia is true. And so I categorized the country that came in as a country using the data category. Then I categorized the district as a state. And then I categorized the town as a city, right? You can see that because I figured, right? Country, state, city. That's how it is all over the world, right? And so what I did was I clicked on my report canvas and I tested it. So I click country, bam, country maps, right? Wonderful. Put that over here. Then I click district. Uh, hang on one second. That's not what I meant to do. Click in the white space. If you want to create a new element in Power BI, you got to click in the white space, All right? I click district and bam, it mapped all my districts. I was so excited about this. I was so excited. And then I start clicking different things in the district and you can see how the focus changed to little places all over the map, okay? Then I was like, ah, guys, what are you talking about? Power BI just works. So I click town. And so you know, town right now is categorized as city. So I click town and then wonk, wonk, wonk. my heart was broken. Didn't map the city, the towns. I was like, why not? They're cities, right? State, city. I was like, hmm. And they all looked at me like, yeah, Mr. Power BI expert, thought you knew what you were talking about. It's like, whoa, 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 didn't say I was an expert. I just know a lot about Power BI. So while they went on and they were working on their labs, I clicked on town. I looked at category and I expanded it out and I looked at the different things that was in category and I saw this thing called place. Place. And I changed it to place. And watch what happens to my map. Bam, all my cities, just like that. And everybody was like, holy smokes. I was like, yeah, 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 right? And so now if I click on, you know, different districts, you'll see, right? This is the capital of that district. And then this is the capital of that district. And it just works, all right? So when you, ha you have to test this and you gotta play with this. And we kind of came up with different scenarios. And um, so if you're using mapping and you're not, and it's not, it doesn't seem to be working for you, just try different categories for those, to, for those attributes and they're probably a map. Another thing you can do is take that value and go to Bing Maps, because we use the Bing Maps um, API to surface all that stuff. Go into Bing Maps, put the value in and see if Bing can map it. If it can't, you know, you should test out some different variations of it to see if it'll work. All right, that's number three. All right, so number four, number four was great. So number four was pretty cool. I actually talked about that, talked to Adam about this and he was like, huh, didn't know that. So let's imagine this, right? There's an option if you click home in the ribbon and you click enter data. So I'm gonna click enter data and I'm gonna say, this is guy in the cube. If I can learn how to type. And of course it's Patrick and Adam. We are the guys in a cube, right? And I click and we're gonna just say G I C is the table name, right? And I click load. What happens is Power BI takes that and it creates a nice little table for me in the field list. Here, just give it a second. And there we go, right? There's our table. But then I realized, oh, I wanted to put their last names. I wanted to put Patrick LeBlanc and Adam Saxon. How do you change it? And everybody in the room was like, yeah, how do you change it? We've done it and we can't figure out how to change it. I was like, oh, you know what? You click edit queries. And when you click edit queries, yes, I'm going into the query editor. You click edit queries and you see GIAC right there, you click it and go over to the query settings and look for applied steps. And right on the source, there's a gear. Click that gear and now all I need to do, right, that dialog box, the create table dialog box pops open and now I can type in this box, LeBlanc and Mr. Saxton, right? And then I click okay. And just like that, my data is updated. So somebody said, go into, why can't I just go into the advanced editor and modify it? Well, right click on it, go into the advanced editor and look what you see, right? There's some binary stuff and you probably wanna leave this alone, right? Just 
use the steps that I showed. Okay, that's number four. All right, so the last one, the last one was, you see how I have all these different things right here in my queries. And when we were going through the workshop, that query list just grew and grew and grew. And then I showed them something. I was like, guys, we need to group this stuff together. And they were like, you can't group stuff together. I was like, sure you can, right? And some, one person, a couple of people kind of knew, but then I kind of start showing them some tips and tricks about grouping. It was like, I didn't know you could do that. So check this out, right? So I have my function. I want to add my function to a new group. So move to group. And if I just type new group, I call this function. Functions, right? Bam and give it a second It put it in functions. Then I wanna put these in parameters because this is a parameter. So I can say new group, parameters, okay. But this wasn't the thing that blew their mind. What blew their mind was, it was like, okay, Patrick, these three right here come from SQL and I wanna put them in a folder called SQL. Do we have to do them one at a time? I was like, no, 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 no. All you need to do is click one Hold down control and click all the ones you want or just go to the end of the list. Right click on one of them, say move to group. We're gonna say new group. We can call this SQL server. Click okay. And bam, let's give it a second. It moves all three of them to the same group. So you can multi-select them, multi-select, right click on one of them, move them to a group. Just like that, right? Now I have everything nice and categorized. Of course, I can move the other ones to web and inner data if I want to, but that's okay, right? I have everything like I want. That's number five. What do you guys think? Did you know all five? I'm curious if you didn't, right? If there's something that you think there's some better tips or you have questions, comments about this, post it in the comments below. This is your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button to all my people out, all my friends that I met out in Africa and Lesotho. Hello, thank you guys for helping me come up with this. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.